Emperor Theodosius II of the Eastern Roman Empire and Sasanian Shah Baram V engaged in the Roman-Sasanian War of 421-422. They fought a short war and ended in a status quo. What was the Roman-Sasanid War of 421-422 AD? Before the war, the relations between Theodosius II and Baram V's father, Yazdegerd I, were peaceful. They tolerated each other's religion, Romans with Zoroastrianism and Persians with Christianity. The last Romano-Persian conflict was from Julian the Apostate's expedition, the resumption of the Perso-Roman Wars of 337-361 from his cousin Constantius II. However, in 417 and 418, the Bishop of Seleucia, Tesiphon, Part of the Persian church, Yubalaha I went to Constantinople due to some strain in the relations between the Romans and Sasanians. Also, Christian missionaries converted some Persians, and in 419 and 420, the bishop of Achaia attended the second council at Velardashir. But there was no sign of war. Things changed in 420 to 421 with the start of Baram V's reign. On May 5th, 420, the law was the construction of defensive fortifications against potential Persian attacks, there was disorder in the east, and the Romans executed Maximinus. From the Persian front, Baram V persecuted Christians, which caused some to go to Roman territory. According to a monk and hagiographer Cyril of Scythopolis, an Arab chief named Aspabetus was the father of Terabon the Elder, who suffered demonic possession. Aspabetus was a Persian subject but sided with the Eastern Roman Empire. Magister Militum of the East Anatolius accepted him and gave him the position of Philarch of the Arabs, an allied Arab auxiliary commander. Finally, Theodosius' sister and regent Pulcheria ended his religious tolerance policy. All this infuriated Baram. Due to the persecutions in the Sasanian Empire, the Bishop of Patriarch of Constantinople Atticus allowed the Christian refugees to come and receive help. Also, Baram V refused to hand over the Isaurian gold miners, possibly in Armenia, from the Eastern Roman Empire, which was a similar dispute in the Iberian War in 530 between Shah Kawad I and Emperor Justinian the Gorst. There is truth to this possibility the building of walls in Persia against the Huns. Under Yazgird I, the construction of the Gurgan and Durbend walls. In addition, he stole Roman goods from traders. Finally, Theodosius declined to return Christian Sasanians to Baram, for the Armenians, Patriarch Isaac or Sahak of Armenia asked Theodosius to aid the Armenian rebels, and Atticus helped. Sahak's grandson Vardan Mamahonian and Saint Mesrops helped to build Christian schools. Pulcheria might have allowed Theodosius II to declare war, but it was uncertain. Possibly, the persecutions would be more likely due to calling a religious conflict against the Zoroastrianism Sasanians. Regardless, he made the first move and the governor, Anatolius, built Theodosiopolis, near the Armenian border. Its purposes were to defend against Sasanian-controlled Armenia and an offensive base for rallying against them. The Georgian chronicles mentioned Baram attacking Iberia and destroying Shersun and Vela VI. The Iberians had an exaggerated number of 240,000 against 740,000 Sasanians. According to Ilka Sivan, the numbers would be 10 times less, and the casualties would be 13. 000 Sasanians and 2,800 Iberians. However, there was disease, and the Iberian leader, Vaxtang, retreated to Ujarma. The Sasanians sacked Bilipizi and Armazi, and they headed to Mexida. However, their attempt failed. As for the Romans, Anatolius had more than 40,000 men and theoretically had less than 12,000 cavalry and 32,000 infantry. As a result, the Persians withdrew, and Anatolius saved Armenia. Also, the enemy left Iberia. The Eastern Roman general Artabarius attacked Azazin through Armenia. He had over 30,000 troops with a 4 to 1 ratio of infantry and cavalry. Sivan mentioned the location of the armies at the eastern frontier, which would contribute to more than 40,000 troops with similar numbers of infantry and cavalry each. However, 
he put half of that army for defense and the remainder to bolster his army to reach over 50,000. Also, he would have gained 30,000 Gothic cavalry as a Federati force and possibly 5,000 Arabs at Amida and headed to Armenia. However, the Arabs would be unnecessary. There is another possibility of a second presental army from the Balkans. Regardless, news of Artaburia's success reached Constantinople on September 6. For 21, another force under Vicinus in Seleucia was with 15 to 20,000 cavalry to follow the Sasanians, the only escape for the Persians was to go to Albania or to breeze through Armenia. There was another direct route, Artaxida to Gojak, but Artabarius and Anatolius' interventions prevented the usage. In response, Baram sent his commander Narse to defeat Artabarius, but the Romans prevailed. Then, Narse invaded Roman territory through Mesopotamia but had an insufficient force. Artabarius and Narse met in Sasanian-controlled Nisibis. According to Theodoret of Cyrus, when Artaburius gave up on Nisibis, Baram attacked Theodosiopolis and besieged it for a month. The Persians used many siege towers. And Socrates Scholasticus exaggerated the lack of help for the besiegers under Bishop Eunomius. Before going into the result, we need to backtrack a little. Baram sent his ally, the Lachmids, under Almunhir I of Alhira to capture Antioch, but it was unsuccessful and suffered many casualties. Then, he led his war elephants, and the Romans incinerated their siege weaponry and retreated. Next, the allied army commander, Artaburius the Goth killed Almundur and seven Persian generals, and Vicinus defeated the Arabs. As a result, the siege ended in early 422. Sivan mentioned the duel between Ariobindus and a Persian general, and Ariobindus won. Socrates put it before the siege and Malalas after it. Overall, the campaign was quick due to the mobility of Artabarius' army. Especially the cavalry, in the 6th century chronicle of Malalas, a patrician named Procopius became Magister Militum of the East, and he and Shah Baram negotiated terms. Simultaneously, he sent Persian immortals under General Artisanes, but Ariobindus defeated them. After the negotiations, Procopius became a consul. In Socrates Scholasticus Ecclesia Historia, Theodosius II sent Helio to be the negotiator, and he was the master of offices, which did diplomacy. He sent Maximus, an assessor of Artabarius, as a peace ambassador. There was a siege of Theodosiopolis, which was either in Osrahon or Armenia. Two Persian columns surrounded part of it but did not change the war. The war ended in 422. Unwilling to fight a two-front war with the Sasanians and Huns, Helios, the master of offices, arranged a peace treaty. The terms were no alliances with Arab tribes trying to revolt, returning to the status quo, reverting to religious tolerance, and no new defenses. The Patriarch of Constantinople, Achaicus, met Baram V in the same year, and the Romans executed 7,000 Persian captives.